Welcome to our fourth edition of the podcast, Joyful Christian Living. We desire for all of the people in blue light land to experience the joy of Christian living. And uh, last time we made one of these podcasts, we promised you that we would love to share an Easter poem called He is Risen. And I would like Eva to present that poem. What, say something about it, right? Right. Um, years ago, we were living in my, uh, well, we were living in, in an RV in the driveway of my mother's house because my mother was uh, in pretty bad shape with dementia and we were looking after her. And uh, at that time, I was actually uh, requested by the family to to look after my mom and take care of her. And uh, Vic was, you know, with me because the only way we could be there for her all the time uh, was to move our home there, which was an RV at the time. And uh, that way we could be there for mom and check on her, but not completely disrupt her house by moving in. So that was what we did. And we took care of mom for uh, quite a while. I can't remember exactly how long it was, maybe a year and a half, maybe a little over that maybe. Um, but we uh, took care of her until she uh, digressed to the point where she had to have nursing care and special care. Anyway, while I was so, taking care of my mom, uh, Vic was working on his creative projects in my mother's basement. Um, and he did quite a, a few creative projects down there. He wrote a few books and uh, we did some audio books, didn't we? Um, but one of the things he wrote was a poem. It was more prose, I guess it's prose. Um, that was just, I thought, unbelievable. Um, it was so moving and still is every time I listen to it. And when Vic recorded it, um, he he put it to music. I think it's a very interesting thing. And I thought maybe you could remember better yes. uh, the name of the music that he used for this poem. And the amazing thing was the name of the group that wrote the music that he put to his poem. So the name of the group is Emissary. And Emissary has a meaning that maybe you can remember. Was it Messenger? Well, Jesus, yes, Jesus was. Uh, it's like a, a a messenger of peace. Yeah. Uh, trying uh, to represent a country, one country to another. Uh, to to negotiate peace, which is what Jesus did. And he, he was a messenger of peace. Uh, this is why uh, we, we were astounded. We did not know. He picked out the music, and I don't know that he paid that much attention, did you, to who wrote it? Uh, we were kind of astounded later That's to right. find the name, to realize the name. Uh, he recorded this in 2012. Right. And the name of the song, the name of the instrumental is 2012, which is interesting also. And I got it from a now defunct site for uh, instrumentals to be used in podcasts and in Creative Commons, Creative Commons thing. instrumentals. And I found this piece called 2012 by Emissary. And as I played it, I realized how much that would go with my poem. These are the kind of things risen. that God does that are so amazing to me. Yeah. Because um, the fact that, you know, Jesus was a, a type of emissary for us. And, and the fact that the name of the group was Emissary. And we tried to find that group later to see what other nice music they might have because it was a beautiful, beautiful arrangement. And we could not find Emissary out there except for some Screamo group or something. It was a Screamo group, for sure. It wasn't them. So we don't know what happened to the the group or person no. called Emissary that did uh, 2012. 
if you're out there, we would love to hear from you. We would. Because we, we love the music that you created and and put up there for people to use. And uh, we used it on this, and it's so, it just comes together so beautifully. And it's just another way to see how God has his hands in everything. Um, so. Yes. I think Vic does very well at reading poetry and prose, and uh, I think he did exceptionally well on this. And, and that's coming from my wife. <laughs> you can hear uh, his. You can hear his emotions uh, as he reads this, and um, it's very touching. It's very touching. It is interesting about the emotional part because uh, I don't or I didn't intentionally program that as something that I needed to do. It was something that genuinely came over me as I was reading, He is Risen. And I really felt the emotion of awe and and yet you wrote this. Yeah. This is this is his creation. The yeah. the prose is his creation and the music is the creation of emissary wherever they are, uh, or he is, or she right. is, whoever emissary is like an orchestra. Wrote this. It's just beautiful uh musical arrangement and just God God's at work. He's at work everywhere in everything and and uh, I never doubt it for a minute because I see his hand everywhere in everything. I praise him for it. I'm so, so grateful to see his hand in everything. He is so all-encompassing. We just can't even begin yeah. to know. But if you keep your eyes and ears open, you will notice it. If you're, what, He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you seek him and you look for him and everything, you're going to see that he really is in everything. And you'll be left in total awe at how all-encompassing he is. We just love the Lord so much. And we're so grateful for his hand in our life. And so uh, do you have anything else you want to add before we listen well, to this? I do. I want to say... Uh... In addition to what you said with regard to the personal impact of Jesus's death and resurrection, there is a world impact that also occurred. We know all about that. All, all the Christian religions pretty much agree Jesus died and uh, you know to save us from our sins and and was resurrected, and we are urged to follow him into a new life as we take him into our hearts, yeah. he really, in a sense, cosmically tapped us on the shoulder to say, uh, excuse me, I gave you free will, but would you mind allowing me to help you uh, negotiate this, this path I have for you? Would you mind if I became embedded in your heart and helped you travel this road called the earth, called the world? And uh, so he's really let us know He's here. He's here. And he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah. yeah. And so the impact is, is a worldwide impact. And in this case, it was a personal impact uh, that we are happy to be able to share with you. This It's a video I created of, of uh, this poem, He is Risen. And so now we present it to you. He is risen. 
It's over. It's done. Though traffic speeds by my window, I can see the lifeless body, as lifeless as a million ancestors of mine. Though birds chatter life out my window, I can see the body in state, lying there, so still, so very still. A jet almost breaks my somber vision with its thunderous roar. I see his hand twitch. I see his eyelids squeeze tight, then flash open, revealing so much love, so much compassion for the people who killed him. Then, as a long freight train rumbles by in the distance, clickety-clack, clickety-clack, I wonder at his power, at his life, at his wisdom, that, though many years have passed and shops are clothed in concrete and glass instead of tents, and streets are asphalt instead of dirt, and transportation is metallic instead of animal, and we are all so sophisticated now, a man in his funeral attire sat up. Destroy this temple, and took some deep breaths, each breath a praise to the Father within. And I will... And angels rolled a giant rock away for him. In three days, and he stepped out into the morning air, praising the life in his body. Raise it again. It's over. It's done. God's Son rose that awesome day. For each of us, He is the way. And we hope that you enjoyed it and maybe uh, emotionally impacted you as well. If, you know, if a few tears fall, this is fine. They did for me. <laughs> and uh, I thought maybe, do we want to talk a little bit about um, how apathetic it seems this world is with regard to this amazing impact? It's it's hard to understand. It's It's so hard for me to understand the many people out there who are struggling in this world, trying to be their own God, which is an enormous responsibility that no, those are shoes no one can fill. God? Those are shoes no one can fill. And yet everyone's running around trying to be their own God, and make their own decisions and, and uh, do what they think is right in their own eyes. Yes. And, 
Yeah, that is the, in the book of Judges, Judges in the Bible, that is the very last line in the book of Judges. So in the book of Judges, there are all these horrendous things that people did, that all the characters did in the stories in Judges. And the point of the whole horrible book is at the very end, it says, and every man did what seemed right in his own eyes. And that's where we are today. Everybody's running around. They, they, they've got their own ideas uh, and their own ideologies of what they think is right. And they think it's right to the point where everyone else be darned. <laughs> and it's, it's really hard to understand. It's hard to understand because God made it all so clear how to have peace in the world, how to have peace with one another, how to have love with one another, how to avoid uh, many, many disasters and tragedies. So much of the tragedies that we suffer and people want to blame God for are caused by man. Cancer is because there's this carelessness this corporate carelessness of dumping poison into everything. And we're all consuming it. We're breathing it. We're drinking it. We're eating it. And, and this is a free will choice that these people have made because they don't have the wisdom or the love of God in their hearts. Speaking of. That's my little soapbox for tonight. Oh, you're going to have more, I know. And I want you to have it because this is Vic and Eva's Joyful Christian Living. Uh, we are, uh, I just had a thought that I thought I would like to share that uh, man, mankind, likes to make AI, artificial intelligence. They like to make robots. And it seems, create their own utopia, and, 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 which they'll never succeed at. Yes, and to try to make life easier, we make robots. But when God made us, he did not make robots. That is right. He made Good point. living human, living, living spiritual beings in a human body. He made um, beings that he would like to invite to know him rather than someone who is a robot and we are he didn't want robots marching to whatever he said we don't care for dictators god is not a dictator no he's not and he is almighty all powerful all knowing and yet he chooses to let us have free will not be a dictator over us so what is wrong with these wannabe gods and these wannabe dictators? Let's just love one another and live in peace. That is where the utopia will really come. With total regard and respect and love for one another. It's not going to come through uh, a handful of bullies that want to dictate how things go. And uh, so open your eyes to the truth. The truth will set you free. And God programmed in us to want freedom. He programmed that in us because that was his intention, was for us to have freedom. And if God, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise, all-wonderful, God thinks we should have freedom, then how dare anyone else think that we can't and shouldn't? So I just praise God for his plan, and I know that once his plan is finally able to be implemented and evil is wiped out, then we are going to have love, peace, and joy eternally. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. We pray that, that people who are blind to the truth that's found in God's word, that people who are blind who think they have to dictate to us spiritual beings who have been born in freedom, that we pray that their eyes are opened and they see the truth. Yes. That they do not have to rule and reign, that there is only one ruler who reigns, and that is God, and that is Jesus, 
who has in, been invited, who will be invited into each of our hearts at our at our beck and call. As we call him, he comes and he He, he draws us in the first place. Amen. We love him because he first loved us. Yes. And he draws us to him. And so uh I pray you get drawn to him. If you're watching this right now, I pray that you get chosen and called and drawn to our Lord, that you come to know him and that you can step into that realm of peace because that is one thing no one can take from us is Christ in us, the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in us that cannot be taken away. So I just pray for everyone watching and ask all of you to seek the Lord with all your heart. And if you don't know him, get into his word so you can get to know him. Be excited to read the map of how to navigate this world known as the Bible. It's the manufacturer's manual. <laughs> we, would, we would not want to read the manufacturer's manual. So we we send our love to you. Another brief uh albeit we hope packed with lots of gems that you can think about and uh, that we think will lead to joyful Christian living. We thank you uh, for tuning in and watching us stumble and bumble our way into everyone having a greater awareness of God in them. And we'll get better. Yeah, yeah. Just keep, stay, in, stay tuned. <laughs> Pray for us. Pray for us. It's not an easy thing to sit in front of a camera and uh, try to envision that there are people listening and watching. That's right. And to think of what to say. But and it, and it, for me, it's maddening to see myself on camera. Well, we say good night and good afternoon or good morning whenever you're watching this. And uh, God bless you. God bless you. We love you. We love to say we love you to the blue light. <laughs> we see a blue light, as you know, and that blue light represents all of you out there in what I call blue light land. And just we just want to send our love out, and boy, will we be happy to take it back in from, from you. Give it yeah. and receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Have okay. a good night. <laughs>